Hey, I'm Alex Mackle from Board Game Co, and this is going to be a Should You Back It of Unconscious Mind from Fantasia Games. And if you're like, Unconscious Mind, doesn't that thing have like, I don't know, 24 hours left? Well, you're not wrong. It does indeed have like 24 hours left, but it only just crossed 10,000 backers. And my rule is that I only do these Should You Back videos on campaigns that have crossed 10,000 backers. That's to make sure that I am heavily distinguished from Chris George, who does these uh, videos of five reasons not to back when a campaign crosses a million dollars. Chris George from Moon Board. And so I don't, definitely don't want to in any way be confused with him, so I'm doing 10,000 backers instead of, um, instead of a million dollars. Yeah. Well, actually, the real reason in this case is the fact that I've been in GameFound, I've been in Poland, I've been in Poland for the past week at GameFound, and didn't really have the time to do this properly, so you're getting it with 24 hours notice. That's also why we didn't get a Should You Back It on Slay the Spire, the board game, which I totally intended to do, but... Couldn't do it for my uh, room with the yellow wallpaper. Which, by the way, fun fact, I didn't realize all the jokes about the room with the yellow wallpaper until someone else pointed out to me that that is a uh, short story or something like that. Either way, this has been two minutes in and we've got to nowhere. Unconscious Mind from Fantasia Games. Should you back it? Should you not? All those conversations. 24 hours to go. This is the second game from Fantasia Games. The first game was Endless Winter, which has been, you know, received to generally critical uh, praise. I say generally critical because I know I've been very positive on the game, but also so have a lot of others. It got a Dice Tower Seal of Excellence. It got a ton of people who really enjoyed it. I really enjoy it quite a bit. In fact, I'll have another comparison video between Endless Winter, Dune Imperium, and, Lo and Lost Dreams of Arnak. And if you're like, didn't you do that before? Yes, I did. But this time it's going to be with all the expansions from all the various games combined and seeing how they hold up a year and a half later. But that's neither here nor there. The point is Endless Winter was generally well received, generally a lot of praise, and Unconscious Mind is the second game from the studio. Although they have a bunch of other things in the works as well, different campaigns that they've helped on, or they have a kid's line of games. They have a whole bunch of things that are coming down the road. But Unconscious Conscious Mind is the second in the series. Another medium to heavyweight Euro, uh, one which revolves around the idea of the unconscious mind, of trying to manage your patients through dreams. This is a worker placement game within an evolving tableau. It's a worker placement game which you're going to have your workers, you're going to be placing your little worker ideas down on the board in different ways that will give you an action but also define how you move your own little uh, marker around your own tableau to trigger various bonuses. Because you're constantly improving your tableau as you go through the game as well, and so you're building out your tableau while choosing what location spot you want to go to and how you're going to activate that location spot in order to get the rewards you you want so there's a whole bunch of daisy chaining going on of different things triggering different things the game is a lot to learn there is a lot to learn i have a full review you can check that out there's a bunch of playthroughs review content there's tons of content you can check out you have 24 hours left to go although to be fair you also have a late pledge window i don't know exactly how or what or when or where or why but there will be a late pledge to this video even if you're watching it well more than 24 hours later can still be relevant but Unconscious Mind, a midweight Euro, a lot to learn, but the game itself flows very smoothly. I've played this game, I've reviewed this game, this is separate from that review, but I love the game. I think it's excellent, I think it's another hit from Fantasia Games, and I think that does matter in general. If you watch their praise on the game, I, I know I, I loved it. Thinker Theme, I loved it. Cracker Love loved it. Board Game Dave loved it. A whole bunch of people from a whole bunch of channels have dived into this game and have really enjoyed what's going on here, which is relevant when you factor in, you know, how well is it going to do down the road? Is it a game you should consider backing? Is it a game you want to get that uh, is it a game you want to get later at retail there's a bunch of options in front of you and there are a bunch of reasons to consider different options from this game the game itself like i said worker placement midweight euro i'm not going to heavily focus on the game itself that's less the point of this conversation a lot of information you can check out there rather i'll focus on the pledge levels uh, should you back it the previous campaign how things went in that sense so you can make a decision and walk in informed to that end, Unconscious Mind is coming to you with a few pledge levels. They're coming to you with the 70 euro pledge level, which is the Ego Pledge, which is, you know, from 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 whole, like, Ego and the id and all those things. They have they have those little jokes there. But the Unconscious Mind is going to be the deluxe edition of the game. This whole Kickstarter campaign is only around the deluxe edition of the game, and is not around the retail edition of the game. And yes, there will be a retail edition of the game. I say that confidently. I don't actually know if there will be, but I say it confidently all the same. Endless Winter did incredibly well, has already been picked up, is already in distribution. You can already get it at retail. We'll come back to that whole timing aspect as to what you want to get but there is going to be a retail version of the game you can check that out you'll save money but you won't get the same level of things to that end they heavily mark over here what you can get as far as the fantasia exclusive is something that's only available from fantasia's promotional activities eShop, and convention booths then we have fantasia and partners exclusive which is going to be from various partners as well but those are both some degree of exclusivity these are things that are not going to be widely available they will not be in your retail copy of the game and you will have to in some way shape or form hunt these things down and that is one reason to consider any of the various pledges you'll be getting over here. 
So again, we have the Eagle Pledge over here. Total MSRP of $102, factor it in, $70, 70 euro as a pledge. And then of course, shipping as well. So you have to factor that in. Overall price point versus MSRP is okay, but not necessarily amazing. We'll come back to the and we'll show you back it. But a big part of it is a lot of these things are going to be hard to get your hands on. So MSRP matters to an extent, but MSRP matters less when you're talking about things where you can't get the game anyway. You're not saying, hey, this is a $50 game that you can get for $42. We're saying this is a $50 game that you really can't get your hands on that easily and you can get it for $42. It's a different conversation, but $70 is going to give you the deluxe edition of the game And it is a deluxe edition of the game the free association module box and the art print pack as well For the super ego pledge at 90 euro You're going to get the unconscious mind deluxe pledge the free association the nightmares expansion The nightmares expansion is going to be an expansion that's added into the game There's a bunch of add-ons bunch of things you can get over here We have the core we have the core game itself We have the free association modules box Which is a bunch of modules that can be integrated into the game Those are the various things that have been unlocked during the stretch goals, which we'll go over shortly We have the nightmares expansion, which is a separate way to deal with the various nightmares. You're constantly dealing with these patients, these clients, and you're trying to heal them. And the nightmares gives you a different opportunity and a way to heal them with a way that will take some tax on you as the actual therapist in question, but giving you potentially more powerful abilities while also giving you a little pets module. So you have the little pets and the little doggies and all those things. And there are doggy miniatures for various uh, pledge levels and all that stuff. We'll check into that shortly. But that's what you get for the extra 20 euro you're getting the nightmares expansion over the other things. For the ID pledge over here, and the ID or the id, not the i, the, the id for the the id pledge at 120 euro and the id light at 120 euro. We'll dive into what the difference is shortly. But the id pledge gives you all the things you saw already, but it also gives you the collector's box, the playmat bundle, and the hollow foil dream cards. So those are the extra th th three things you're getting as part of the id pledge. So if you're trying to figure out the difference between should you pay that extra 30 euro or not, you're basically getting playmats, you're getting the collector's box, and you're getting the hollow foil dream cards. The playmat bundle is exactly what it sounds like. It's a bunch of playmats that work together to give you the playing area, playing area that you want. This is not dissimilar to the way Endless Winter handled it, where they had a variety of different playmat options to give you the various space configurations that might be most useful or beneficial to your gaming space. The Hollow Foil Dream Cards are just cooler versions of the Dream Cards you already have. So you have these cooler cards with Hollow Foil printing on them that just are as you might imagine, cooler. So if you wanted your game to look cooler, cooler than it already is because this entire thing is deluxe to a degree, then yes, the Hollow Foil Dream Cards will give you that extra level of deluxe, deluxe, deluxivity. But then additionally on top of that, you're going to get the Collector's Box and we'll go through some of the things that are in the Collector's Box when we scroll to that area of the page. The id light is the exact same pledge price as this and mostly the exact same contents. The id light is for those who want to basically uh, be more conscientious of, first of all, saving money on shipping, so there's conscientious of that, but also just waste in general. You see, the id light is going to give you all the contents and the components that the id pledge gives you, but it does so without all the extra boxes. That extra side box here, the, 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 the nightmares box here, the collector's box, the, the free associations box, all of those are gone. You don't have to waste those. Everything's going to come pre-packaged in your regular pledge, and you are going to be saving some money on shipping as well, while also saving, you know, just general wastage. So that's an option you can consider over there. And so far, in fact, if you look at the pledge levels over here, we currently have uh, 120 over here. On the id pledge, we have 100, 1,421 backers. And on the id light, we have 4,091 backers, which means most people align with myself over here. And they're like, hey, those extra boxes are nice until I throw them in the garbage, at which point, why don't we just save myself the money and the environment and all those things together. And that's what the id light pledge is going to do. It's going to up to 20% up to off your shipping price, but it's just generally, if you're not going to save those boxes anyway, as I know I certainly don't, well, it's going to save you in that area. Then we have the Immortalize Your Dream pledge, which gives you the opportunity to get your own specific dream card in the in the game for 500 euro and those are six left of those we currently have six left in case you want to get some specific art poured into the game from the art of andrew bosley with the assistance of yoma there for the fantasia's art director poured in some way into your game i don't know the exact terms on this i don't know whether it's people or options or things but if you really have that house you grew up in that you really have you know poor memories of just I don't know, the, the, this, the, how scary and intimidating it looked like, or maybe the school you went to as a child that you really don't ever want to see again. Maybe you can go ahead and get that printed on a card so that everyone can see it again. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's options. I don't know what the options are, but if you want to do that, immortalize your dream for 500 euro. As far as why Kickstarter, they cover all of that shortly, but let's keep scrolling through that. We'll go through the why Kickstarter shortly. There are a bunch of reasons to continue that, but we'll cover that in the show you back. There's a whole bunch of just content here. Here we go. Here we go over here. So we have the contents of the game. We have all this poured over here, showing you how in general it's going to be all packed together. Some of the playmats being stored inside the box there. We have the free associations module, which are the things that have been unlocked through the stretch goals, which we'll cover shortly. The hollow filled dream cards, the playmat bundle, the small double-sided playmat over here. So you have that option as well. And then the collector's box. So what's the collector's box going to include over here? Collector's box includes all of this. Some of the tokens are going to be upgraded to miniatures over here, which also does mean 
seeing that some of those, you know, screen printing that you got as some of the stretch goals won't really be helpful or beneficial to you if you upgraded some of these things to miniatures, but in general, they have those over there. We have these for the, the colored resin markers. It's going to be an upgrade from the other wooden tokens you'd have otherwise. We have the highly detailed v PVC miniatures for the pets modules. If you want your cats and doggies over there to be uh, upgraded and deluxified. We have four ink pots, colored resin with real corks. So again, your ink pots, these are going to be little markers that go in your own personal tableau. You'll have those upgraded. You have the treatment markers going to be colored resin. We'll have the gramophone. This is one of the modules, again, the free association box. That's going to be upgraded as well, as well as the fire firework acrylic standees is going to be upgraded. So again, some of these are modules that have been unlocked in the free association, and these will all be upgraded and deluxified. We have Freud's coin for the mark over here. We have the collector's tray that fits inside the box, the journalist, highly detailed PVC, and the small double-sided play mat. So these are all the things you're going to get in the collector's box as far as the, the extras you get at that pledge level. From there, we have these painted miniatures that are your totally under, your, yours are totally not going to be painted. We also have a, an add-on of the Dream World, an unconscious mind card game. Basically, they added another card game to the thing. This is going to be an extra. I recall correctly, I think this is 10 euro. You have to go to the add-on section to see that. But I believe this is 10 euro, although it doesn't say on the page. It should say on the page, but they have 24 hours left to go. They can update that maybe or maybe not. But this is going to be a completely separate game, just utilizing the art, finding an opportunity and excuse to utilize the art as much as possible. You can find out more information on how this plays in update number 10, I want to say. I think update number 10 has more information on how the game plays, as well as an art book. So if you want to see an art book through this, and something about worth noting about the art, the art over here of Unconscious Mind is divided up into the artwork of Andrew Bosley, and the artwork of uh, uh, Vincent Detroit, uh, basically combining the dream world and the real world, so they have that kind of dispersed aspect to the game where both are being combined and merged, and they did so tremendously well across the course of the game. And if you want that art book, that'll be available as well. Those are both options that are not available in the id pledge. You have to pay extras for those, so factor that in. But that's what you have over there. Which brings us to the uh, the association, the free association module, and all the contents therein. So we have the funded, we have the screen printed pets, we have the custom shaped treatment markers over here, the box liner art, the uh, three new technique tiles. Fireworks module, Uncanny Client. So you're seeing more and more just modules and extra cards and components added. Ink pot labels, again, not as helpful if you have those ink pots deluxified yourself. Some songs, because we have a soundtrack added here. We have the Illusion Dream card, the Gramophone Standee, which again, you have a module, you have a mini miniature for that now that's been unlocked. We have more dream cards, more cards, more cards, more research cards. A journalist meeple, a journalist meeple over here, screen printed. A journalist miniature. So again, three different upgrades around that. Nightmare goals, more research cards, the uh, thick, thicker grief layer dispenser. That's going to be option over there. We have madness insights. We have two new illusion dreams plus a hollow foil. We have the acrylic fireworks stand D. We have more hollow foil tokens and more depressed insight tiles over here, which will have debossed wells so the pieces will not shift. That's very helpful, effectively upgrading your, your insight dials into more of a dual layered situation. We have screen printed ideas for what those are worker placements that you're placing down. We just more and more upgrades. Debossed nightmare inside tiles this is going to be relevant for your uh, the nightmare expansion. Again, giving you the same idea of a double layer board for your nightmare expansion, more storage bins, the new illusion cards, quotes from Freud, uh, Ben Maddox. Oh my gosh, Ben Maddox, that's amazing. I didn't realize, I didn't even see us Ben Maddox doing this. Ben Maddox, who's fantastic from Five Games for Doomsday and has a voice, a voice of gold or, or, or hell or something. It's very intense. It's a very intense voice. From Ben Maddox will record a series of famous quotes from Freud layered over a new instrumental song on the soundtrack. Oh, I didn't even see that one over there. We have a Hollow Full of Dreams tuck box, spot UV, and then this one, I think this is particularly compelling. This is going to be reached when they hit 11,969 backers, which I think or assume is the backer count from Endless Winter. But we have a new illusion card, a special dream card featuring a callback to Endless Winter. That is very cool. More importantly, the reason that's very cool is not just because it's a callback to Endless Winter, but because of how beautifully it fits in within the game here. This does not feel out of place. It does not feel like an incorrect merging of two worlds. This is a dream card pulling like this giant mammoth outside a window in a way that just really merges the two worlds beautifully. I really hope that gets added, whether they hit the 11,969 backers or not, I do hope it gets added. And that's what we have over there, as well as a whole bunch of preview content, like I mentioned already. A lot of people have gotten their hands in this game, and a lot of people have enjoyed this game, which brings us to the should you, let's cover shipping fees first. Shipping first, we have USA over here, there's some options over here, anywhere from 20 to 25 euro for the various pledges as far as shipping goes. The, again, the ID light or the id light is going to get a little cheaper for options there. Uh, shipping range anywhere, you can see the star chart, pick your region, you know, anywhere from as much as 50, as little as 10 euro for Europe zone one, to as much as 56 euro for like, you know, rest of the world over here. The pledges will, uh, will, will vary over there as far as that goes. And with that, we can go ahead and go up to their own little should you back it option, which is actually really well done. They have a should you back it option, which is worth covering. Why back on Kickstarter? 
So, while back in Kickstarter, they have a few different options here. I'm going to focus on a few of these, not all of these. First of all, the heavily discounted products. That depends. Again, a lot of these options are going to be things that aren't heavily available, and so the MSRP is a little bit all over the place. They have as much as a savings of like 100 MSRP on the id option, just a ton of different options. That's great, in theory. I still think it is worth it, because something worth covering here is the general structure of how they are selling things and distributing things and giving things here on this campaign is similar to Endless Winter. While the games themselves are very different, the actual structure of how everything's put together is similar, and it's worth noting that Endless Winter did a fine job holding its value. If you look at the sales price on Endless Winter, if you people who look at people who sold their Kickstarter products of the game, the Endless Winter, the deluxe versions of the game, absolutely have done a totally fine job holding their value. It is a well-liked game with premium aspects that were given during the Kickstarter, and that means it did well. Despite the fact that it was available, many options were available in retail. Depending on who you were, depending on where you got your pledge, there are many options for the game available in retail before other people got their hands on the pledge, and that has been a point of contention and frustration for some. And that's something that's worth mentioning because they also have this get your game first over here. For those who do want to ensure that you're getting your game first, for those who do care about that, they have covered the fact that over here, depending on how this run runs, they go, they're going to arrange an independent print run for Kickstarter that's going to fulfill weeks or months before the retail edition. In other words, while I myself don't fall in the category of minding that so much, and it is easy to say, yeah, Alex, you're a content creator, you get the games first. Sometimes yes, but sometimes no, and I wasn't always a content creator. I, de I generally never minded getting the game first or not. I have plenty of games to keep me busy. But I respect that some people do, and for those people, Fantasia Games said, you know what, you're right, we're going to go ahead and ensure you get Unconscious Mind before retail does. Past that, you're going to get deluxe exclusive options that are not fully exclusive, but limited in their availability, limited in your ability to get your hands on them. And so sure, you might be able to wait for retail and you will save money, and you absolutely will save money. If your goal is to get Unconscious Mind at the cheapest price point possible and experience how good the game is, well, then you'll get that. This is a great game, and it's going to be a great game whether you get the retail edition of the game or not. And if you want to have access to this great game, and if you're the kind of person who's playing a game here and there and you don't need the all-in deluxe and bling and everything else, well, you absolutely can get your hands on retail and pay, what, 40, 50, 60 bucks for this game down the road. It will not be nearly as expensive as the various options you have here, and you can lay out that money down the road when you still care about it, if you still care about it. So if your options are a concern around just getting the game and the goodness of the game at the cheapest price point, I would recommend waiting for retail. Uh, you'll get a lot of great stuff, and the game is solid. You don't need all the extras and bling, and you definitely don't need all the extras and bling if you're going to play this game twice a year, if that much. But if you do want all the extra and bling, and if you're just concerned as to whether it's worth getting or not, can you sell it for what you paid for it if it's a game that's not for you, I believe the answer is a firm yes. I think Unconscious Mind is excellent as a game, and I think the production quality and Fantasia's approach to the campaign is similar to what they've done with Endless Winter, which is a game that definitely did hold its value. I think this is a safe back overall as far as if you are someone who is concerned as to whether it's a game for you, and you just want to make sure that you don't have to pay twice the price on the aftermarket, or if it's a game that's not for you, that you can sell it instead yourself, then I think this is one that is overall a safe back. One more point that is worth mentioning is Fantasia Games does take a very module-heavy approach to a lot of their, well, I shouldn't say a lot, of the two Kickstarters they've run, they've taken a module-heavy approach, and I will say as someone that is a huge fan of Endless Winter, I don't love the heavy degree to which they utilized modules in that game. I find that in general when I play Endless Winter, I find myself torn as to just which version of Endless Winter do I want to play, which section of cards do I want to add in, which this and plug and play and plug and play. It's not so much as expansions, expansions I don't mind, but there's just, there's a lot of plug and play in the game of Endless Winter, and it seems that they're taking to a smaller degree, but still to some degree, they're taking that approach with Unconscious Mind, and as someone who is a huge fan of Endless Winter, I don't know if you need all of it. So again, going back to the whole aspect of do you need this, do you need the extras, do you need the free association module, do you need the little grab a phone module, do you need the fireworks acrylics model? My answers are firm. I mean, not really firm. It's my answers kind of, I don't know, but I wouldn't heavily feel like you're missing out. Do you want the base game of Unconscious Mind? I think you should get this game. If you are someone that this game in any way appeals or resonates with you, I think it's a game worth getting because I think it will appeal and resonate with you. I think you'll enjoy it. And if you're uncertain, I think it'll hold this value just fine. It doesn't mean you necessarily need everything, and that doesn't necessarily need mean you need all the bling. So should you back it? It'll hold its value. It's a great game. I can't speak for the expansion content or the models as I haven't tried those yet. And whether or not you need the extras, that part's up to you. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.